Hello, so I'm just doing a little experimentation and by request, people said, hey, could I do um, linear algebra in SIMD? Like, could we do a fast implementation of linear algebra? And we absolutely can. It comes down to a little um, rethinking of um, vector matrix operations. So, I mean, this is just one operation of many is multiplying a vector by a matrix. Um, let me just go with the standard two by two. Now, of course, we know what this result is. We take um, a times x plus b times y, and that goes in the first row, first and only column. And then we take c times x plus d times y. And there we go, that's our result. So traditionally we, well, not we, I won't, I'll, I'll just speak for myself. Traditionally, I was always taught that we take the row of the matrix and we take essentially a dot product with the column of the vector and that produces this result. So if I wanted to speed this up, I would wanna come up with a fast way to do a dot product between two vectors. Um, however, that's not really what's, that's not really the fast way to do it. And that's not really the way that's going to work because OpenGL expects the matrices to be passed in, not um, across, but actually down in a column major order. So let me do the same calculation, but then I'll rephrase it in a different way. So if I look at that, I actually see that I have a common factor. And if I pull that common factor out and split this up into the sum of two column vectors, then it's x times ac plus uh, y, I mean, y times bd. So it actually turns out that the way we can think of this is we can think, okay, the entries of the vector that's being multiplied are coefficients for a linear combination of the columns of the matrix, which is being sent. So let me say this another way. Instead of looking at the rows of the matrix, we store them in column order. So we look at the columns and then take these columns as a basis vectors, if you will. And these are our linear coefficients for the basis vectors. Um, so again, this is the way OpenGL expects data to be passed in. And it also turns out to be the optimal way at least for this case, to um, transform vectors. So let's look at that in action. Pop over here to my code. And I'll be copy pasting this in as we go because the point, this isn't a coding lesson, this is a math lesson. So here's how we would do this in the naive approach. First of all, um, let's use GLM as our reference implementation because it's pretty optimal. So as you can see here, we want to transform this four by four matrix, use it to transform this vector. So we will uh, define the vector. We just go down, that's a whole column and then define the matrix. So again, as we go across, that's actually going down the first column and then across that's down the second column and so on. That's the convention. So I'll just set this up. All we need to do is start timing. I'm going to do this a million times to make the time difference more obvious, because if I just do it once, it'll be such a fraction of a second that we won't even register. And yes, yeah, so we just go um, the standard matrix, uh, the standard GLM multiplication and there we have it. Let's give that a crack. And we see that's taking about 330 milliseconds, which is actually really good. That's a, a really good time for that. Doing something a million times, doing anything a million times in under a second. That's pretty good. So now let's have a look at the, the SIMD approach. So there are a number of 
conventions, I'm going to go with 128-bit registers because as you can see, that's four floats. That's all we need. So, yep. Yeah. So I can also do things with this. So I can say, um, if I were to go already, um, multiply uh, PS for packed scalar. I want to multiply my SIMD vector by um, any number at all. I, I set a full vector with one value. That's what set one value is, packed scalar two, for instance, and this operation will double every element. So it's scalar multiplication on every element and because of the data width, it does it all in the same time. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm going back over my old stuff, but if you look at my course, SIMD in one afternoon, I go through a lot of this stuff. Um, so this union is basically setting it so that these variables occupy the same memory space. So they're two different ways of accessing the same data. So we have, um, yeah, it's just a handy way of working with things. So now we can set the matrix and the matrix is four by four. So you can think of it as four columns. So each column is going to be set the same way we would set a vector. By the way, this set R is set reverse because by default, if we go, you know, one, two, three, four, it'll actually order them the other way. So anyway, it's just the way it works. So here we are setting each of the columns and we could, you know, get a pointer to this, send it to the GPU, that would work fine. So let's go and look at the multiplication. This is gonna be a little bit messy the concept is pretty straightforward, but the implementation is a little bit messy. So I'm going to work backwards from this. So if we go right back to the end, we're taking column number three, we're taking the coefficient number three. So the, the fourth and last coefficient, um, setting a full vector of those and then multiplying so this is essentially scalar multiplying the third or the fourth column by the fourth coefficient, if that makes sense. And then what I want to do is I want to add that onto the um, yeah number two coefficient times the number two column. But I'm using this operation fused multiply add. And what that does is it multiplies these vectors and then it adds on whatever is here. So if you have a look here, we go um, coefficient zero times column zero plus, and then we go down plus coefficient one times column one plus, and then, so that's why this looks a little messy, but um, yeah. In fact, let me just reverse these just for convention so that at least, oh, whoops, 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 at least visually it looks a little more unified. But anyway, like I said, oh, oh, what is that one bracket too many? What's it complaining about? Okay, <laughs> there we are. So like I said, the, the concept is pretty straightforward. The implementation looks a bit ugly, but yeah. So the question is, before we were doing it in 330 milliseconds, with this simple implementation, how does that do? Four milliseconds. So that's a big difference. The question then is, well, is this a good approach for every problem? Um, and that's something to investigate. It certainly solves this problem pretty quickly, but, um, yeah, no, I just thought this was pretty, pretty neat, pretty cool. All right, so hopefully this explains some stuff. And um, yeah, let me know what else you would like to see. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.